Waraka is considered one of the first people to believe in Muhammad's prophecy. Despite the torture, Bilal continued to proclaim one one affirming his belief in only one God. The Prophet peace be upon him said, "Do not revile Waraka, for I saw that he will be in the garden paradise or will have to rule gardens." Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Waraka is considered one of the first people to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's prophecy. He died shortly after Muhammad peace and blessing of Allah be upon him received his first revelation in 610 CE. Khadija experienced a vivid dream where she saw the sun descending into her home. Intrigued by the dream's significance, she sought counsel from Waraka. Upon hearing Khadija's dream, Waraka interpreted it as a sign of forthcoming union with either a distinguished nobleman or even a prophet. He suggested that such a marriage was destined for her, indicated by the sun entering her dwelling. Khadija, prior to her marriage to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, had been married multiple times according to some accounts. However, this dream occurred early in her life and she was unaware of what awaited her. This context is crucial. Is it underscores the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, pre-eminent status and the auspicious signs surrounding his life from its beginning. Throughout his life, there were numerous miracles and signs of his special nature. Even his birth was marked by extraordinary occurrences such as the radiant light emanating from his mother's womb. These indications of his uniqueness were recognized by those around him, including Abu Lahab, who celebrated his birth with fervor, understanding the significance of the event. When Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, received the first revelation, Aisha said, The Prophet returned to Khadija with his heart beating rapidly. She took him to Waraka ibn Nawfal, who was a Christian convert and who read the gospel in Arabic. Khadija said to Waraka, Listen to the story of your nephew, O oh my cousin. Waraka asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "What do you see?" When the Prophet explained, Waraka said, "That is the same angel Allah sent to Prophet Moses." The Prophet peace and blessing of Allah be upon him asked, "Will they drive me out?" Waraka confirmed, saying, "Anyone who brought something similar to what you have brought was treated with hostility. If I am alive when you are turned out." I will support you strongly. However, Bukhari narrates that after a few days, Waraka died and the divine inspiration paused for a while. Remember, in the previous video, we talked about Zayd ibn Amr, a Hanib who died upon Tawheed. Waraka too was a Hanib. When Zayd ibn Amr died, Waraka wrote a poem about him which reads like this. You are altogether on the right path, Ibn Amr. You have escaped hell's burning oven by serving the one and only God and abandoning vain idols. For the mercy of God reaches men, though they be seventy valleys deep below the earth. One day, during the heat of the day, Waraka passed through a valley where Umayya ibn Khalaf was torturing his slave Bilal ibn Rabah. Umayya forced Bilal to lie on the ground with a large rock on his chest, demanding. He renounced his faith and worship Allah in Al Uzza. Despite this torture, Bilal continued to proclaim one, one, affirming his belief in only one God. Waraka joined in, saying, One, one, by God, Bilal. He then protested against the abuse, warning Umayya and his clan, I swear by God, if you kill him this way, I will make his stomach a shrine. However, Umayya ignored him. Ibn Kasir questions this account as the persecution of Muslims began several years after Waraka's death. Springer, however, suggests that Bilal, being of Abyssinian descent, might have been Christian before converting to Islam, although he was separated from his parents at a young age. It's possible that Umayya persecuted him for this reason before 610, which could validate the story of Waraka defending his. Fellow Manatheists. Nevertheless, 
there are no sources identifying Bilal as a Christian. Instead, it is indicated that Bilal was a polytheist who renounced idol worship before becoming one of the first converts to Islam. Some scholars, including at tabri al baghi Ibn Qani, Ibn as sakan and others have listed Waraqa Ibn Nawfal among the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Sheikh Ibn Usaymin, may Allah have mercy on him, expressed his view stating, What appears to me to be the case, and Allah knows the best, is that, that Waraqa is to be regarded as a Sahabi. So one should say, رضي الله عنه, may Allah be pleased with him when mentioning him. Similarly, Sheikh Saleh al fawzan affirmed that it is appropriate to refer to Waraqa as a Sahabi, saying, Undoubtedly, yes, he's a Sahabi, and we should say, رضي الله عنه, may Allah be pleased with him. This perspective holds that Waraqa ibn Nawfal was the first man to believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Supporting this, Al-Hakim narrated from Aisha, May Allah be pleased with her that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. Do not revile Waraqa, for I saw that he will be in the garden paradise, or will have two gardens. Waraka ibn Nawfal was a revered figure in pre-Islamic Arabia known for his rejections of the prevalent paganism and idolatry of his time. A truth seeker by nature, Waraka was deeply dissatisfied with the spiritual and moral decay he observed in Arabian society. His quest for religious truth led him to embrace Christianity where he became a devoted follower of the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Waraka's adherence to Christianity was marked by a strict monotheism as he faithfully upheld the belief in the oneness of Allah and refrained from associating any partners with him. His life and beliefs exemplified a profound commitment to spiritual integrity and truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you wherever you are. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.